Fastest in the class by eight seconds on SS1, Stephen Crockett and Martin Henderson were off to a fast start in their 205. However, mixing with the dust was oil smoke, the oil filter failing after the flying finish, leading to another retirement. And that would leave the two MGs to decide the class. Second at the finish, Neil Cowan Jr and Thomas Bruce played the championship game, easing off over the last loop to guarantee a good points haul. 27 seconds up, Scott Peacock and Robin Neal would take their third win of the season and maintain second in the points. The MG crew probably left ruining their Argyle retirement. Tom Howie and Charles McKenzie's Sunbeam would retire with overheating issues in SS2. Second at the finish, it was a tough day for Jamie Stewart and Kevin Mollison. The morning was spent with a burst oil cooler and the afternoon was spent without brakes. Jamie does have the consolation of the class points lead with one event remaining. Finishing with a broken front strut, it was a much less hectic run for James Cabell and Kevin McIver, taking the class win by almost four minutes. Right Angus Laurie is about to discover that not everything is right with this Corsa. Right eight, left seven in seven. The culprit was found out to be a broken rear stub axle, and we also lost Finlay Retson, who disappeared in SS2 with broken front suspension on his hired Fiesta. Breaking the same engine mount twice in the one day, Drew Barker and Shona Hale were happy to finish fifth in class in the Citroen C2 Kettle Edition. Surviving a big impact with just a broken rim, Nikki Addison and Rachel Matheson were a solid fourth in class in the 106. This result leaves Nikki second equal with Barber in the driver's points and Rachel first equal with Hale in the co-driver standings, with one rally to go. Third in class for the second time this season was the high revving Civic of Ryan Ingram and Stuart McLean. After a horrendous run of luck with their Corsa, Scott and David Sloan had replaced it with the ex Gareth White 208. A day of learning left them second in class at the finish in their Peugeot debut. How much did a finish mean to them? Well, jump on board in the final stage and judge for yourself. Then right four in. Right four in on the stop. Yes! yes! Come on! Woo! That was good. In taking a second win of the year and moving into the points lead, Ross Hughes and Stephen Brown were two minutes clear at the finish. But it was a lucky finish, the rear beam mounting breaking on the last stage, making it a nervy run to the end. Jim Robertson and Mike Curry continued their good run of form this year with a fourth in class finish. Mm -hmm. 
Just over 30 seconds up at the finish, Douglas Watt had a good run to third, despite a visit to an SS5 ditch. Maintaining his class lead with a second place finish, Fraser McNichol had Graham Kelman alongside this time out. Fraser now 18 points clear of Jim Robertson in the class standings. With a new engine in their Mark II, John and Megan O'Kane stormed to a class win by just 26 seconds after their usual day of sideways style and a couple of visits to ditches. Third in class at the finish, David and Douglas Cameron maintained their second place in the class points. Championship leaders Ian and Sandy Milne grabbed second in class this time out, finishing a minute back from the big BMW of Ernie Lee. Ernie taking his first class win of the season as he continues to develop the car. Alex Perry and Fraser Skeen were back out in their Felicia, the car still giving bother with two broken drive shafts in the first two stages. Despite being OTL, they were able to gain some useful test mileage in the Skoda later on in the day. The Grampian would see the senior rally debut of J1000 Ecos Championship leader Johnny Mackay. With fellow MSA Academy alum Reese Stoneman alongside, the Fiesta grabbed fourth in class at the finish after a day of big excitement and big learning. 42 left in. C170. Block two right over 100, tightens to four. C150 over grand. Block five left. And turn square right over bridge. Go for your hero. Bridge and square right. And there was a titanic three way battle at the top of the class. Third after two spins, Grant McRae was very happy with a finish after last minute gearbox dramas. The white Fiesta only three seconds back from the blue ST of Ali Curry at the finish. Ali finishing the day jammed in third gear but maintained his class points lead. One fifty down, go out of it. Tightens to two and go. Go on it now, go, go, go. To four left plus in, to flat one hundred down. Go on it, go. Six left, seventy. To five left in, ninety down. To turn tight one left through the bridge and three left in. Turn tight one left. Bridge, three left in. Keep her tidy. Three left in, and six right in over crest, go, go. And just nine seconds up at the finish was a blast from the past. Former 205 pilot Bobby Mitchell was making a comeback to rallying with Hannah Sessford in the hot seat. We would lose the Mark IIs of Paul McArlane and Michael Stewart during the day. Third in class at the finish, Stephen and Mary Wood were testing a new steering rack on the Grampian. A very good drive saw them finish just 40 seconds off the top of the class and saw them net the John Horton Star Drive Award. They also maintain their class points lead.
back after their big Scottish accident, Duncan MacDonald and Neil Ross were understandably cautious on their return. They still managed second in class and were only 11 seconds down on Willie Stewart and Peter Carstairs. The Mark One taking its first class win of the season. Greg McKnight and Harry Marchbank had spent the day building a class and two-wheel drive lead going into the last stage. Long right three, 150 up. Flat left one, 100 up. Flat crest, 150 up. And flat long right one over 60, 120 up. Flat, long left, one of her crest, keep it narrow, 70. Right, one of her crest, 40, left, four. Order, order, good man. Right, 140, left, four. We've had a couple of moments already, but sadly, it's going to end on a slightly downbeat note. There's your nine. 150. You're kidding. Nah, what the f is that? And this would leave the two-wheel drive championship leaders out of the event, but still in the points lead. Now all they need is a finish on the Galloway Hills. Second in class at the finish and still enjoying his return to gravel, Keith Robothan slid the big BMW nicely around to finish just 40 seconds back from the class and two-wheel drive winners, Gordon Murray and David O'Brien. Gordon and David continue to regain their pace since returning from their big border accident last year. Very happy with that. First, first time ever. Brilliant. Uh -huh. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, terrific. Great day. Oh, the stages were really good. Mm -hmm. Really nice rally. Yeah, went well for us. Really good. I mean, obviously this year you managed to come back after your big accident in the border last year, but since you've come back out again, you seem to be getting quicker and quicker and the car's going very well. Yeah, the car's going really well. It's just uh, getting the confidence back after the, after the heavy roll that we had. So, yeah, it's going really well for us. Yeah, good. Really good. Such a long layoff, David. Eh? It's a bit difficult to come back in after that length of time. Get back in to swing it and losing this. Well, we, we couldn't do the snowman and we lost the, the counties, obviously. Yeah. So it was a long time out of the car. And uh, the, the, the next couple of rallies, it was just a case of getting back into the groove again. So it's, it was probably, it's probably now that we're really getting getting going and yeah. the season's almost over. So, But uh, we've, we've chipped away and we've yeah. managed to keep getting solid results. So we're, we're happy enough for that. 